Hello everyone, by the end of this video I hope to prove to you that algorithms are fun and worth spending some time to understand them. And I will do this by writing an algorithm that generates a different type of maze every time we run it. As with any algorithm, the best place to start to solve a particular problem is to think about the data structure underneath what you're trying to model. We should ask ourselves which data structure we can use that will store this structure of our maze. And we can think about a maze as being these different nodes of a graph connected together by edges. A graph is a data structure that contains nodes which are connected together by edges. And actually in our graph, to represent a maze, a node can have a maximum of four neighbors, four connections coming out of each node. To represent a graph data structure, we can use either an adjacency list or an adjacency matrix. If you are interested on how we can represent graphs in more details and also the different types of algorithms we can use on them, check out this book, Advanced Algorithms and the Data Structures. It is a very good book and it will help you with other data structures as well. Please use the link in the description as a way to support this channel and also you will get a 35% discount. To write our maze generation algorithm, we can take inspiration from other algorithms that we have that operate on graph data structures. Probably one of the simplest algorithm you can think of is the depth first search. This algorithm is typically used when you have already a graph and you want to explore it. So in this example, when we have already the graph that represents our maze, we can apply the depth first search algorithm to explore all the nodes in the graph. The way this algorithm works is that it keeps on exploring until it kind of literally hits a wall in this case, where it cannot explore any further and then it backtracks back to a node where it has another edge to explore and then continues from there until the entire graph is explored. So this algorithm can be used to solve an already existing maze. We can explore the entire maze until we find the exit. Could we possibly adapt this algorithm so that instead of exploring an existing maze, it generates a new one every time we run it? I suggest you pause the video over here, think a little bit about it, try to come up with a solution and then come back and see the rest of the video. There is the story where this artist was asked how come he can complete such amazing work of arts in his sculpting and apparently his reply was that this sculpture is already complete within the marble block before he starts his work. And since it's already there, he just has to chisel away the extra material. And this is the idea that we will use over here for our maze. Imagine initially our maze is just this blank piece of rock okay, that we need to chisel to create our maze. We will use the depth first search algorithm in a random manner and the algorithm, while it's exploring this block of marble in a random fashion, will end up creating our maze. Initially, we can think of our graph data structure to be completely unconnected. None of the nodes have edges coming out of them connected to other nodes. We can start the depth first search algorithm from any position. However, to keep things simple over here, we're just going to start it from the first node. So from this first node, we have four choices. We can either go north, we can go south, we can go west or east. Our algorithm should pick a random direction and then proceed towards it. So let's have a look at how we can implement this first step in the code. Over here, I have some Python code and I have created a few initial constants. Okay, things like width, height, border, scale and so on. And I'm also using this turtle package that will allow me to draw things on the screen later. I have also created an empty function here called carve passages from accepting two parameters, the parameter X and the parameter Y. So the first step of this algorithm is to create these different directions that we have. So I'm creating a variable over here called the directions that will contain these four directions, the north, the south, the east and the west. Next, we should take these directions in a random fashion. So what we could do over here is to use the random.shuffle and pass in the directions list. This has the result of shuffling the directions in different orders. Next, it's just a matter of following these directions in the shuffled order. So we do for direction in directions. And now continuing with our example on the right hand side, as you can see, even though we have four directions, the north, south, west and east, we can only pick two of them, okay, because the north and the west are outside the bounds of our graph. So really, we should exclude the west and the north. If we go back to the code, we can exclude them by first trying to move in that direction and then check if we end up out of bounds. 
So we can find the new x, the new x coordinates, by saying new x is equal to x plus move on x towards the direction that we have chosen. This move x reference we will implement later, it will tell us whether we need to subtract or add to the current x. And we can do the same thing on the y, we say new y is equal to y plus move y towards the direction. Let's now implement these two lists, okay, that will tell us where we need to move on the move x. We say if it's a north, we need to move zero positions. If it's a south, we also need to move zero positions. Remember that if it's the movement on the x-axis, north or south, will leave us where we are. However, on the west, we subtract one, and on the east, we move one, we move to the right. On the move y, it's the reverse. Moving north means we need to subtract one, we're going up. Moving south, we go down, we add one. West is zero, okay, doesn't change the y-axis, and east is also zero, doesn't change the y-axis as well. So now we just need to check whether the new x and the new y are in our bounds. And we can check this by saying if an x is less or equal to zero, however, an x is less than width, and we need to do the same check on the y-axis. If the new y is less or equal to zero and less than height, it means we are still within the bounds that we want. So going back to our example, if we choose south, we should move our position to the node underneath us, to the node at 0, 1. And again, over here, we make the same choice. We can move to the north, to the east, or to the south, because west will take us out of the bounds. Going back to the code, we need to do two things to do this movement. The first one is to set the heading in the direction that we want to go, and then we go forward. So these two commands are from the turtle package, okay, they're imported from the turtle package, and then enable us to draw on the screen. In this case, they will kind of simulate us carving a passage through our maze. There is a little bit of a problem over here, the set heading function doesn't take the north, south, east, west, the direction that we want to go to, instead it takes an angle, an angle in degrees. So we can define a constant over here, and we say that the north is zero, south is 180 degrees, west is 270, and east is 90 degrees. And here we're just going to use this map, this direction degrees, to convert the direction into the angle that we want. And when we want to move forward, we want to move forward one unit. And because we are scaling things on the display, we move forward one unit times the scale that we're using. If we go back to our example now, we need to repeat the whole process. So we want to move to another square. We cannot move to the north because that's where we came from. So in this case, our random choice is going to choose the east. And again, after we move on to the west, we need to make the same decision. Do we move to the north, to the south, or to the east? Continuing with our example, we are going to choose the east, and again we have the same choice, north, south, or east, and this time we're going to take to the south, so we move to the south. Next we are going to choose south again, and we move on to the south, and we continue in this fashion. We always kind of making this random choice in the direction, and we move to that direction after we set the heading. To implement this repetition, the fact that we're doing this choice over and over again, we can use recursion over here. This means we can call this function after we move forward. So here we can write carve passages from, again calling the same function, but this time from the new x and the new y. Now going back to our example on the right, over here we have less choices to make. We can only move east. This is because the south is the place where we came from and the north is already explored. We have already been there. So we need a mechanism to stop us from going into the nodes that we have already visited. A quick and easy way to implement this check so we don't move on to nodes that we have already explored is to use a two-dimensional array. This two-dimensional array will have a number of columns equal to the width of our maze and a number of rows equal to the height. We can call this two-dimensional array is free, and each item in this two-dimensional array will represent whether we are free to visit that particular node or not. So going back to our implementation, the first thing we do in our function is to set the current position as being not free. At position y and x, remember that the first argument in a two-dimensional array is the actual row number, so in this case we put y, 
and the second argument is the column. So we put x and we set the value to be false. Next, we need to add to our if statement to make sure that we only visit the nodes that are free. Going back to our example, we take on the east node, so we move on to the right. However, this time we are not allowed to move anywhere because every node around us has been already explored. So in this case, our only option is to backtrack. And we backtrack back to a node which still has some options, some other nodes that we can visit. So in our example over here, we backtrack to this particular node, okay, because we still have a node to explore, the one to the south. So we take that particular connection and we continue the algorithm as usual. So let's implement this backtracking mechanism in our code. After we return from our recursive call, we just need to move backward. And in the turtle package, we can do this by doing backward and we put the unit that we need to move. In this case, it is scale. Okay, if we move forward by the scale amount. We also need to move back with the same amount. But before we move backward, we need to make sure that we're pointing to the right direction. So we say set heading to the direction that we are supposed to be pointing to. If I scroll down over here, I have the main part of this program. And a lot of this, okay, this first bit over here is just setting up the window and setting up the graphics, okay? Things like setting up the background color, the position where to start and so on. This part over here is setting up that two-dimensional array, the matrix that will tell us if a node is free or not. There are various ways you can do this in Python. I'm using comprehensions over here, but over here I'm setting every single position to be true. And I am creating a number of columns with the range width and the number of rows with the range height. And then I call our function starting from position x equals zero and y equals zero. All that's left to do now is to run it. And as you can see, our program starts from that initial position, carving our maze. And then uh, when it gets kind of stuck and having no option, it backtracks back to a place where it can move again. And I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to wait all day. And while our program is working, trying to create this maze, just a reminder that you can find the source code in the link in the description. And also, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below.